okay so I'm going to be scraping a site which has proved quite tricky to scrape and I've already tried a few proxy services and one of the problems I had when I was testing the proxy was I was getting response 200 <laughs> this was using um, beautiful soup and requests no the 200 response actually um, was quite misleading and um, what I did was uh, eventually I looked at another service no I'll tell you what I looked at um, crawler a crawler -a. and on their site they've got a test feature where you can use curl CURL and you can check whether the you think the site's going to be scrapable before you register <laughs> and um, at the very last minute I thought oh, okay that's that's I think it was um, for mm, it doesn't matter but I think it was 14 KB kilobyte response so then I check, checked another URL and I got the same size response and um, yeah you know where this is going the page I kept getting the same page and what was that page it was a capture or a page that was taking me to a capture so this was not good and in case anyone else is saying well why do you use beautiful soup or why do you use scrapey why didn't you use selenium um, that doesn't work either selenium ends up <laughs> arrives at the same screen and then it thinks it's a robot well the website thinks that you're a robot and it asks you to solve capture so the only way to scrape this site really is by <laughs> yeah you can't bypass the scrap well, unless you know some amazing AI which can get you past the capture you have to solve the capture before you can scrape it so any command any strictly command line uh, software will struggle with this so I think um, yeah the next thought I had was to use something which combines uh, a GUI and if you don't know a GUI is graphical user interface it combines a GUI with um, sort of command line high much faster performing code after it's cleared it so what I'm going to show you here is very trial and error I've been learning it for just over a day it's a it's a trial and my instincts are that I won't be subscribing to it and why is that <laughs> you may ask the reasons are it's it's very hit and miss and it's it's still plagued by some of the same problems it uh, gets past the capture but then it gets um, it, it it's hampered with a screen which says uh, it's in a foreign language or foreign to me and it says that um, you cook cookies or JavaScript's not enabled and you try and click on it and the screen just places a trans an opaque sort of layer over it so you can't click it so you can't proceed to set up your um, it's little little macros basically that you can set up depending in which mode you choose so enough of me talking uh, if you watch through all of this say it's going to be trial and error it's going to be a long video um, but maybe you might learn how web scraping services work and then you might appreciate why <laughs> the expensive ones if they work are actually worth it and why the less expensive ones uh, which still don't really get the job done um, what's the point you could either pay somebody on Upwork to do it and fail <laughs> you could pay thousands of pounds for a company to do it professionally and, and hopefully succeed or in the middle ground is something that half works and takes an enormous amount of time of human time to keep re-checking it passing the captures for it and then you still only get half the data that you want because it won't go to a certain page to get the extra won't go to it will cope with the list page but it won't cope with the details page so you end up half of the data that you want and you're still paying 
fifty hundred dollars a month to get only half the data so it's a halfway house and i'm not convinced it's the correct choice for most people either fail cheaply or succeed expensively <laughs> there's not much middle ground as far as i can see you may think differently so enough talky bits i think i'm gonna have another slip of this from my official tea break mug and i'm going to do this which will be a very long video and hopefully it'll be different it will show you some <laughs> some failures because it's not all about showing how stuff works a lot most for most of us things fail so let's just share that <laughs> and um, at the end i might put on a little <laughs> a little bonus project but i'm not going to give too much away on that just you'll have to watch all the way through or <sighs> skip most probably is that what you do i don't know anyway keep watching excuse me well i should have done this earlier I do apologize most unprofessional sound check testing testing here we go so uh what have we got we've got a trial version well i say a trial version you can sign up for five days and within five days you're uh entitled to cancel your trial so to speak so what you can see on the screen is i believe it's opened in whatever the current windows browser is called so, internet explorer yeah i know what you're thinking what you should be thinking <laughs> right so Enter a list or table web page. Well, we don't want to do that. Flow chart mode, visual operation, only click on the web page. To so this has got the thumbs up. This has got the thumbs up and automatically identify web content. Pagination. Enter. Right, let's try that. <laughs> uh, I'll let you in on a secret. I have been experimenting with this for on and off now for 48 hours so um i do know what i'm doing so don't switch off thinking you're going to watch somebody just randomly click what's that uh, i think that's called whack-a-mole isn't it <laughs> whack-a-mole whack-a-mole right url to import create so I've got a URL that I want to check out. Hit create. So the, effectively, this is, as I mentioned earlier, hmm, failed. Oh, oh there. URLs have got two lots of. In it, let's check it. Oh, is it because it's got quotes on it? Move the quotes, start again. Apologies for the false start there. So, as you can see, it uh, throws up a robot page. Now it's loading. So, I don't know whether behind the scenes this is running sort of Selenium first. If you look underneath the sort of the Grayed out bit, you can see lots of data has already been collected, which is good. And um, I don't speak very good uh, German, but I believe this is cookies page. So that won't go away. And don't entirely trust the browser that this is running in. So this is running in it's called Microsoft Edge, which uh yeah said about that. Why can't it run in Firefox? Open proxy. Enabling web security.
So as I sort of kind of explained, this could be a very <laughs> hit and miss. This is more a demonstration. I wouldn't call it a tutorial because I'm not going to say do this, do that, and then you get a wonderful result because uh, that's not true. Do this, do that. You may get some success, but <laughs> this is more about how to uh, how to wrangle with third party software when captures are involved and potentially one other option would be to attempt to use Scrapey with some third party service. So Let's get this clear. I'm not advocating using a paid for web scraping service. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it's interesting to look at how that deals with it and out of curiosity, <laughs> look at the logic, look at, uh, look at how it attempts to handle things. Try scrolling page to load more. As you see, there's probably some, probably some. Okay, so then um, let's cancel that. Right, so did I just enable? Um, I don't know whether that made any difference. So here we've got, this is where we do all of our kind of um, crawling logic, should we say. I'm just going to turn that off again because I don't think it might have made. So I think this is kind of, we have to help it. We don't just click three buttons and then it crawls the site and gets everything we need. We have to kind of nurse it along the way. How to set up paging. I've been there. Auto detect. It's auto detecting that it's a listings page. This list or detail page. And um, yeah, you can see it's got 18. Oh, the pre I don't know if you can read that. Preview only displays the first 18 rows. No limit during running. Fine. So what it's done is it's extracted. Uh, it's extracted results from the list page. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> right, next. Um, paging, so page type, list type, list type, paging. So here is where we want to. Um, I'm just going to show you two ways to set this up and paging. So already we're looking. Yeah. And next page button auto detect. I don't really let you in on a secret. I've already tried this and it sometimes it finds the wrong bits. Select button edit X path. Well, okay. Auto detect. Select button. Let's do, I'll show you this. Got a little magic wand. So with your little magic wand, you have to click next page button. And I'm going to change color there. So let's do save. Changes are saved. Now. Set scraping range. Oh, this is good. Let's start page, current page, the end page, last page. And um, so we've done this bit, we've done that bit, that bit. Working from left to right. Filters. Um, Uh, 
Okay, so uh, I'm guessing that's telling it which bits to leave. Uh, yeah. A new rule. Okay, so we can leave out if a link, for instance, is um, I can leave out by price. If we don't want any properties over a million euros or something, and then you say if it's true or not true. That's quite good. Um, clear, that just does what it says. Clears all of your data here. Right. So we're left with two bits. Scrape in, if you can read that. What it does is it goes down to the details page. And this is where the problems happen because it starts running. The details page loads a lot more slowly. Got the page. Now uh, it's got a headline, so what it's done is it's just got this as default. So here there's a nice little feature where you can do add field. So if we click this, we get our magic wand again. And then we can say I think we've already got these from the de from the um the list page, so we don't need to get those again. What we'll do is we'll extract type add field. So you see here we've got what well actually what I should do is name those Eten Ganaz. So if you go here, right click name. Excuse my jet, I'm not making any typos in. Um I'll see, so I'm, I'm renaming the field so it makes sense when you get your output. Uh, that one's name type. Rename. Opens off screen. I've got two screens. And. Yeah. I think I need to get. Ah, I clicked the wrong thing there. I don't want to scrape the. That's actually. That would actually scrape me <laughs> a big CSV full of. With every column saying that because that's obviously doesn't change. That's the title. What we want is. The bit that changes, which is the value. And let's just rename that. I'm not going to do all of the ones we need because uh, actually in production we actually need um, about 20 of them. Quick. And right, I think that's, that's shown you the general idea. So you pick out the data points using the magic wand. Let's save it. And um, I think we've done enough <laughs> exploratory sort of setup work. Let's do a test. Start. A lot of these features are only available if you pay more money. Uh, which is slightly disappointing because already the version I'm testing is, uh, let's say, it's uh, in dollars. It's, um, I believe it's $49 a month. So, if it works, then it's similar price to a paid proxy or a good paid proxy. If it doesn't work, <laughs> you could have got a paid proxy. Um, obviously, the paid proxy doesn't really solve sites with captures that are quite persistent. And uh, yeah, you can see the progress. <laughs> We've got, so we've got a little uh, graph here that's sort of showing us the uh, speed. Time, download, data. 
Now these sliders here, they're options which, uh, they're not options with this version. That's why they're grayed out. You can attempt to enable them, but you just get a message prompting you to hand over some more money. So data, logs. So we're on the logs tab at the moment. If we go to data, see all of the fields? These are ones which will, we would like to populate. And uh, yeah, show page. And that's just opened. I'm just dragging it back across. Hmm. We've got a black screen. Uh, I don't know if you can see the title here. In I'm the robot, uh, I'm not the robot. So it's asking you to confirm that you're not a robot. Hmm. Okay. Let's. If anything went wrong, click here, okay. And then it takes you to a FAQ page. Not really what you want. Hmm. So they can see previous attempts. I'm going to rename this, so... I'm going to attempt to rename it. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I think already you're starting to see the, the issues that it, it faces. These are what we'll look at next. So we've got three buttons here, pre-login. And this takes you to the capture solving. But what it, it obviously only takes you to the capture solver or whatever you're doing. So if you're actually setting up, uh, you're setting up your, uh, you're setting up your task, um, you end up having to go through the capture to simulate your scrape, uh, which is fine. But when you run your task uh, sort of in anger, so to speak, um, it obviously fails again because the capture is different. So you have to solve the, you have to manually solve the capture even when you're running your task. That's obvious, but yeah, what it is. Ah, input cooking. Okay. And it's crashed. <laughs> well, okay, right, back in a sec. Hello, we're back. Right, so I've got a brew. Um, up. Okay, um, right, that crashed, so that's not, that's not great, but I think we need to just persevere a little bit. And um, in the meantime, what I think what we'll do before we progress any more is just have a little chat about web scraping in general and um, how I see it or, or my take on web scraping. So obviously, this is just my opinion and opinions are like, <clears throat> everybody's got one. So, right, we've got... So here we've got, I don't know, IMDB and books. Um, then we've got sites which we can scrape, which aren't too bad. So we've got Wikipedia. Um, I don't know. I mean, um, to be honest, there's certain bits of Amazon that you can scrape without uh, getting in too many 
pair of 403s or 405. I don't know, but um, let's say Yahoo Finance or something. So yeah, you can scrape those. Then, yeah, then, so the next one's up. Let's just say, let's say Amazon. Um, what are the sites? Well, the other thing I've missed out here is sites with APIs. So let's. Got sites with APIs. So got sites like um, eBay. They give you an API. <laughs> yeah, you put me on the spot. Why are the sites have got APIs that uh, that, that work nice? Uh, oh, of course, YouTube. <clears throat> and um, yeah, and then we've got. Here we go. If I had a skull and crossbones logo, I'd put one here. I can draw. Some, some sites aren't viable to scrape as. Um, <clears throat> well, I, I refer to sort of um, the Upwork kind of um, single um, operator. So Upwork, uh, rent a coder. <clears throat> I hope it's not sexist, but there's a it used to be we had the same man in a shed. I don't really think that is sexist because in general, I suppose you're not allowed to generalise, but yeah, in general, it's a man in a shed who does sort of hobbies and stuff. So there we go. And um, in the middle, we've got Amazon. So this is kind of halfway, halfway house. So potentially sort of professional or pro and he's got the unscrapable or very challenging. Now, what you need to do when you're looking at a site is to establish whether, which category you're, you're analyzing. So are you looking at something which is in the first category or the second category? Or the third. No, I mean the second category. Uh, let's give some sort of examples. So th this will typically have um, maybe getting data from the API as JSON, which you can scrape. It may be using JavaScript. Um, You'll probably have to pass it uh, query string parameters, it's called. Um, yeah, I mean, this is where the, the sort of the crossover comes between beginners, one-offs, you know, where you just scrape one page or one thing from a page. This is where you're collecting sort of potentially thousands of products. Uh, this is where you're scraping a site that does not really want to be scraped, and then you've got um, capture. Um, let's call it rate limits. Um, Geo IP detection. Um, even if you can scrape a site like this one, Then there's chance that you'd be. Yes, I know.
there's a site there's still a chance that data might go missing or you can't get all of the data or that um, it was very slow so And really, so to summarize, this I believe is where the enormous organizations go. Um, but it's, if, so it's, you, you want um, a web scraping, uh, I believe it's called a software as a service. So that's what you really need. And um, the, the, the platforms that you see, when even say crawler A, I have to crawl, it didn't work or it just got the capture page. It, so it gave me an error, to, an error a response 200, um, but the 200, did not actually mean that it scraped the page. What it meant was it had successfully loaded the capture page. Uh, so yeah, I think I think I've waffled enough about that. So let's get back to <laughs> get back to our uh, scrape storm. I'm just going to open it up again. So now post crash. <laughs> Let's see what we can uh, <laughs> Okay, so post crash Let's see if we can resurrect a scraper which has worked because <laughs> I could spend all day attempting to write a new one or to, to demonstrate a new one and this is very hit and miss. So what I'm going to try and do is show you one that a 1am look. I was still testing this at 1am last night. Not good. Not good for my health or sanity. So really, I wanted to um, make a video on this, kind of um, show how it can work, but also how it doesn't work. <laughs> that makes sense. I'm sure it works nicely on um, easier sites to scrape, but then on easier sites to scrape, you could either pay me or pay somebody on Upwork who could probably scrape it quite easily anyway. And there we see, it's, this is the preview of page and it pages. Uh, I'll let you in on a little secret. This is one that has worked, but there's still more issues because occasionally the oh that's getting up my forty. So that's loaded the second page. The first time to hold your breath is always whether it's going to load the second page. Then the next time to hold your breath is whether it's going to get past. Um, the fifth page. You know what? You get um, one page one, page two, page three, page four, page five. Then you get the ellipsis, the three dots. <laughs> Past that, you then get your the next arrow. Now, when you use their wizard or detection wizard, um. Sometimes it will go to page, uh, here we go. It's gone to page four and then it's decided it's had enough. Now let's have a look at, let's actually have a look at the site and see if we can uh, cross reference. So let me just um, do this. If I go down here, uh, do you see how it was going to the next page? So it went 20, 40, 60, 80. And I have had it working. If I 
Right, the bit I haven't shown you yet was um, bottom one. What I'm doing now, just to recap, just not just what you saw just then where it got 80 results, that was running the task. Here, I'm editing or modifying the task. So the task is effectively the scraper, the spider. So you do have to kind of, uh, as I say, you have to nurse it. So fields. So you can see it's, it's getting lots of data, which is exactly what we want. But yeah, no, you see, I had eighty results. Didn't see the end. The the export screen went onto my other. The export uh, dialog box went onto my other screen, so then I dragged it back across. Um, so we're getting eighty results run the task but then it's failing to go off and get the next page so um, down here we've got select button and auto detect select button so auto detect didn't work select didn't work. edit x path and I can't scroll in on zoom in on this so apologies for anybody who's watching on a mobile phone or anything like that but um It was working and it was getting me from page one to page two to page three to page four and then it hit the ellipsis those three little dots and that's when it was falling over so i was getting uh, four lots of 20 so i was typically getting 80 results and then it was hitting a snag and i think it was then trying to press that next button well <laughs> via the x path it was and for whatever reason it was just returning um it was returning a bad result and then the it because the scraper timed out it thought it had finished so i was ending up just with 80 results when really i should have had over 2000 um yeah potentially um i, I may have been able to fix that with xpath but really um, it's a lot easier and quicker just to actually count the number of pages you need bit of a fudge but there we go Okay, so I had some sound issues during the filming, the filming of this, as well as some speech issues. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sort of talk over, give you a bit of a commentary of what I was doing. Um, so this was my script, which I've already written, and what it's doing, tell a lie, this is the script, which... I'm just going to take the base URL which will be everything up until the ampersand and the page number and uh, that's going to be the base and then I'm just going to um, dynamically uh, generate the ampersand page number equals followed by integer uh, as I go along so what I'll do is range equals now I've already gone in and checked the range on the Immobilien and Scout DE 24 website and for each given search and on this one there were 83 so for each of those pages we'll generate a unique URL and then we will feed that back into the scraping software. I'm not naming names, you've probably seen seen the company who create it. Um, I'm in no way endorsing, criticizing or anything, I'm just doing <laughs> a demo really. As you saw it crashed, I'm not going to pass comment on that. I'll leave those thoughts to you. And um, Yes, yeah, so the URL list, I'm going <laughs> to... You'll see in a minute, this was really dumb. 
I don't know if you've ever tried making a video, but if you try and record, talk, check the levels, all that, well that's my excuse. Anyway, you'll see in, in due course there I'll move that uh, empty list outside of the for loop. I'm also waiting for a food delivery today, so I'm kind of, uh, I haven't eaten yet today, and uh, does that affect your concentration? I'm partly doing it for health reasons. Does, has anybody ever heard of 24-hour uh, fasting? It's supposed to be good for you. I don't know. Anyway, so base URL plus string of i, which is your iterable, and you just see finished finished fine with no errors which is good let's print see what we get print the URL list <laughs> and as you can see there's only one result because it's the last result because the list keeps overwriting itself that's what you get when you don't create the list outside of the for loop <laughs> Sometimes you get so used to using uh, Scrapey with dictionaries and uh, you can go days without creating a list. <laughs> if you can hear any random noises in the background, that's just the sound from uh, this occasionally kicking in. Hopefully you don't. So with this list, uh, you'll, you'll get it in a format which will be with quotes and uh, because it's in a list and the uh, the web scraping software wants it without uh, quotes and without commas just one bare URL per line so you'll see in due course very shortly how I deal with that and obviously yeah if anybody if you're thinking ahead I use join so I'll just join using um, a pair of empty quotes. Uh, one day when I get loads of subscribers I'll actually uh, I'm planning to fully reinvest all proceeds back into this channel so um, yeah uh, if anybody's got any um, advice on microphones I gather that these Lav Lavalier mics are, are good but presumably um, my $20 one from China is probably not the, the best. I said Code Monkey King, he's got a, a boyer, and that sounds pretty good, so I may look at that. Anyway, um, just creating the text file here. And um, once we've got all of those pages to scrape, we'll feed those back in. Can you see the problem here? <laughs> I'm trying to write a list or feed a list to the write function, which is it's not liking that. So I need to uh, do the join here. Join with a pair of empty quotes, and I've missed the ending parentheses, parentheses, parentheses. Uh, this, I know this is a bit different to normal obviously I've put loads of captions on and edited my previous videos and I just thought um, I'd give you a, <laughs> a what's and all view of uh, a day in the life of uh, <laughs> scraping a difficult site that's looking promising It does look like the picture's frozen there, but it hasn't, I can assure you. And although that visually that looks a complete mess, uh, with the help of a pair of quotes and uh, a backslash and an, the letter N, we can fix that.
anyone new to Python um, passing strings is probably the most common task you will do using a for loop and passing strings is just <laughs> at the, it's behind everything really that's, that's a, unless you use something like unless you're sort of a data scientist maybe using pandas but even then a for loop and passing text is pretty much uh, the root of I was going to say the root of all evil no it's, um, it's, it's the base of pretty much everything you will do I'm saying that is sort of like in comparison to using a, a programming language such as C, whereas you're you're dealing much more with um, memory addresses and particularly if you're using something like Arduino, then you're dealing with inputs and outputs and character arrays and pointers and so on. So we've saved it. I've just successfully run it. And I'm just going to go and open the text file. And this should mean we now have a nice text file of 83 perfectly formed URLs. Boom. Paste, control V. Paste them in. Look at all those. I think I think it said it takes up. It's yeah the sound's just kicking in I'm just going to move back a bit um, most bizarre I don't know what happened with the microphone there but um, yeah there you can see I've pasted in those 83 URLs and we're actually getting somewhere so after all my um, struggling with auto detect with putting, trying to get the right X path um, rather than hunting for the next button sometimes it's to be honest though the, the problem is you'll get though is as the site changes day by day for instance tomorrow you might have 79 pages or 87 uh, obviously if you probably the best thing to do is just set your number higher <laughs> set your page number to be 100 or something something you think you're never going to exceed and then I suspect you'll you'll hit an error when you the page is not found, and then it'll either not respond with you in timeout, which is quite probable. Uh, that's probably it's actually better than if you put in a number like sixty five and then you don't get an error, but then you you'll miss the uh, the last thirteen pages of your scrape. Open with my uh, trial version of Excel. Let's have a look. Right, so, um, yeah, lots and lots of data. I think that's all right. As previously uh, mentioned, basically the URL to visit the details page. I guess what I could do is it's getting more and more. <laughs> manual and more and more rather it's getting less and less automated but what potentially you could do is get this list of ah uh, no you can't because you still can't visit those because the robots text and whatever security they've got on their site stops you visiting these those ids directly if i try one i'll show you we can my browser across. I can, okay. So we'd have to every day run this for an hour or so, and then after we've done that, then we could go back and close ID.
yeah that looks all right okay so control a i'll see just um that's still house captain okay let's paste that in and uh, Let's see what that does. This is kind of a semi-manual, semi-automatic. Yeah. <laughs> is it half, half and half? Oh, I need to figure I think it's, it's doing it by um, dates then, probably the last page. Rough list about six or ten months ago, so. Uh, schedule, start, just do it. Yeah, while that's doing that, let's uh, go back to my code. Um, what I want it to do is actually um, uh, yeah, I put in fifty nine, but I omitted that when I copied it out of here. But I'm just going to um, let's just check up, check up on this. Doing 120. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna go and pause it, go away, and then we'll, we'll look at the results to this, and then we'll wrap it up. And I'll probably just uh, do a quick summary. So, okay, uh, so that appeared to work okay as well. Export and uh, same as before. <sighs> Um, two, isn't it? So this is one and a hundred. One and seven. I believe that means. Apartment by save that and I think what I'll do is I'll run number three, which is this one. So let's build the ah what I need to do Bohung Mi then my my So go back into the site. I need to do start from my my Miatin, my Atin. I think this is going to be a very short. Uh, go down and see how many there are. 113. Okay. Copy that. Bit through our little URL gen program. Uh, 113 in there. Ready to 
in that. That looks better. Control A, B. Um, store that in there 113 go um, I'm gonna run that and then finally after that's run which hopefully like the previous two attempts that should run fairly much like the first two after that then I will have three complete sets of information um, at the list level And start on that. Um, I'm going to let that run. Once that's run, we'll come back and then we'll just do a final bit of investigation as to uh, whether we can drop down into the uh, details page. Um, I think that's going to be the stumbling block. It's been running really slow. When I've been attempting to visit each page, but we'll 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 get we'll check that before we go. So yeah, back in a bit. Okay, so we're nearly at the end of this third grape. Uh, I believe it was two thousand hundred two nine two one was it? So uh, yeah, nearly done on that. I just thought I'd uh, let you see see it working in real time because. Um, <laughs> I may well video edit this at uh, six speed just to um, <laughs> cut out the boring bits. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, once we've got all set, so uh, I should. One, two, third one. So once I've got three sets of data, that's each of those queries uh, at the list level. Then we'll just give it a try. We'll chance our arm and see if we can get anything with the, the dropping down into the details level. Um, if we can, then that's a bonus. Uh, and we've the screen's gone dark, which I think think means it is finished and let me just drag that back across screen there we go 2736 in half an hour which is nice cross save the file as I see again hmm If I only got one file in there, one is it? Could have been the second one. The this. I think my video editing's fighting against me. Well, let's try to uh, should have had one in. So we add a... <sighs> uh, okay, I'll run that one again in a bit. So uh, what we want to do now is we actually just want to look at the possibility of making this one drop down into the details level. So try and save this task.
Okay, so it's <laughs> this is an frustrating thing. You click the wrong button and then you have to wait for it. Um, get me past all that. I'll run you again, but I want you to go and get the grape in. robot and um, yeah, this is really the stumbling block on the whole project really threaded capture brings up green of cars Hopefully it's only going to ask me to do this once. Uh, okay, so what I want to show you here, I think I can remember if I showed you earlier, but this is where we can use the nice little uh, magic wand and we can add the extra fields. So please don't let that get in the way. Hmm. No, see, you see, I can't get rid of this screen, which is really annoying. And the thing I do will make it go. And we're not missing anything. So if I do add field, I get the magic wand, but as you can see, I can't. Um, potentially you could add field by, you can also add by X path. So edit X path or CSS or regular expression or JSON path. Um, problem with doing it this way is you can spend half an hour adding in all these fields and you Potentially, you can save the task, but you come back to it, and then there's been an issue, and then you have to create a new task, and then you've lost the half an hour that you've spent selecting all the fields. This, oh, that's the problem. It's going to try and scrape. <laughs> try and scrape this. I don't know if I can get past this. German. So, I yeah, this is this is part of the problem you have with trying to scrape the digital page. It's asking me to name cookie. Last. Uh, don't quite uh, So hopefully what you're um, seeing here is actually uh, the problem with trying to get the details page. Good as this is, I'm sort of half impressed. <laughs> uh, now can I... This details page it seems to be very slow to load. I don't know if that's deliberate. It makes it very, very frustrating when you're trying to scrape it. Just really slow to load. Let's just leave it there virtually. Okay, so I can add the field now. Ah, you see, I'm. Um, page type. Let's tell it it's a detail page.
this auto detecting fields is a double edged sword because it obviously trying to essentially it can save you a lot of time it's a shame you can't just kind of have an option where you can kind of override a lot of this and you can just say skip or auto detect and just let me put in my x paths and read them from this text file there's a little bit too much uh, click 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 in the boxes go on here really in the auto detecting is now taking forever I think um, I'm probably being quite harsh on this program because really it's, well, it's amazing but hmm. uh, the, this particular site is obviously uh, <laughs> one of the stiffest challenges that it will face hmm anyway is everybody having fun out there in Cubeland? I just thought I'd uh, conveniently put this here I've started reading this one liners pretty good lambda map and uh, yeah it gets quite difficult quite quite quickly neural network analysis in one line hmm. writing your first web scraper with regular expression thought re dot compile crypto oh so it's scraping a crypto site um okay nothing's happening here this is typical of the problems you have once you start trying to scrape a details page the field i can but i don't actually know if this is really Oh no, it's just um gonna go slow because it's still trying to load something. Loads a few of these, I don't know. Loading page. All I want to really just attempt is to try and get something from the details page, even if it's just two or three fields. Obviously, this um, kind of grayed out, semi opaque bit here is uh, trying to load the page, and the page is just so slow to load. So, I think I'm going to call it a day there. Um, let's just review what we've done. So we've we've looked at how to scrape a site that's got quite strict capture on it. We've collected all of the listings. Essentially, you could collect all of the listings, which gets you the um, yeah, gets you all of the URLs. Essentially, you could then write a script which could then go and visit all of those. Problem is, is once you visit the URL, it can be slow. Let's just try it. Right, so that's one. I'm going to try and visit six because I know that it lets you visit uh, four or five, but once you get to the fifth, sixth one, then it starts a little bit. Funny. Six two. I'm gonna randomize these as well so that it I'm a robot. Now for some strange reason this is loading fine in Firefox, but when it's loading within um the scraper pro the scraper program it's um having issues. think is this fifth or the sixth do one more for luck
Oh, that's just not got a picture. It's not actually an error. Okay. Problem is, you'd, you'd be paying um, a lot of money for this scraper, and then you'd end up having to code a lot of it yourself anyway. So, uh, I'm fairly sure that if I tried to visit these expose IDs using, um, let's just try it, shall we? So let's just do import request URL equals in uh, equals request dot get do I specify headers <laughs> URL do I specify any headers or not yeah let's do that so headers equals headers and here we do headers equals oh, we'll just do um, user agent and if uh, if you saw one, oh no, I'm giving the game away there. Uh, <laughs> one of my other videos, which may, I don't think I've um, released it yet, actually shows me getting the user agent. One. Yeah. Ah, uh, no, that was... Um, yeah, that was just... It my like um try this for now. I'm uh, I think I know what's gonna happen anyway, so get an error four oh five if I'm I'm very much mistaken. Um R dot X. We wanna print it because um we just got a response dot 200 we might think it's working but you need to actually look at the response because um it may just be a response 200 meaning it's successfully loaded a page which is asking if you're a robot i hope um, this isn't too hard going i mean um really this is an in-depth look at how to use a Valid URL. Ah. This is what happens when you type and talk and find it to so okay. Sorry about this. Uh, I'm starting to, uh, you can see I'm starting to make mistakes. And what have we got here? Um, what a page with? No. Hast du die cookies? Hast du die Ausbarung? JavaScript, cookies, blah, blah, blah. So, block yet. No, we've got, although it's loaded a page, it's actually the page that says um, you're a robot, please go away, or just cookies browser, blah, blah, blah. Um, I could put in headers, cookies, and the, the whole shooting match. In fact, let's do that just to prove I'm not uh, talking respect element. And um, it will actually give me a chance to show off and show you my new header parser. Get this. Get the raw headers. This. You have to hold down the left button and then do right click and copy. I'm still confused by why these browsers behave like that. I'm sure there's a good reason. Uh, do is, uh, you'll see this in a future video. So this is a kind of a um, sneak preview. So
Not this. Run that. And what it's done is it's passed all of that stuff that we got from, from the browser and built us a complete set of headers. So here we go. Was that quicker than doing all the uh, adding in all the quotes and commas by ourselves? It was. Try again. Ah. So there you can see we put in um, we put in cookies. No, we didn't use cookies, but um, they, they, that doesn't make any difference anyway. And it's also complaining about JavaScript. And there we go. So, um, yeah, I think that's been enough for today. I, hopefully, you've uh, seen, at least seen me do a few things with Python. I've, uh, <laughs> this is in another video, by the way. But this is where um, I take the text from a browser. I paste it into a doc string, well, like the, the triple quotes, and then it passes it. Run that again. And it takes what you've copied from your browser and it formats it into a nice Python dictionary, which you can then use uh, for your headers dictionary, which you can then use with requests, or you can use it with uh, scrapey or whatever if you're using it with scrapey then oh yeah that's what happened i left out cookies because i wrote this for scrapey but if we look at the um if we look at this we should see cookie is there let's just add cookie Copy, this is quite small and uh, you'll see it in a minute, so I'm not going to zoom in. Um, oh yeah, cookie is already there, sorry. Uh, oh wait. Uh, so if I comment that out, it should add cookie into the dictionary. I need to work on this because you see it's truncated the cookie and it's because it's found another um found another colon somewhere inside the cookie I think. So uh right back to plan D which is copy all that. So you can see what happened. My code um, broke. I got cookie there, but uh, that's not good enough. So let's just do this a little bit by, my, by hand. Um, you'll see in the, in the future video when I cover this, what I was doing was writing um, writing it for Scrapey, and obviously Scrapey doesn't need cookies. Scrapey manages cookies itself. So let's just um, copy that into R1. Is it, does it be in order? So cookie come after connection. Paste it in. There we go. So we've now. There was I showing off that I was manually that I was processing the cookies, uh, processing the headers. <sighs> Got. Yeah. So I. I Complaining about ad blocker, JavaScript, so on and so on. So, um, yeah, anyway, I've just shown you a little sneak preview of another video, which is the one where I uh, process the headers from the browser. Um, what am I talking about? Well, let me show you. Zoom in on this. It's this. So, if you go to um, headers and then you go to request headers, if you want to set all these up as a dictionary, then just copy. Left click, hold down the button in Firefox, right click, and copy, and then 
paste it into my headers processor code. And um, although I thought of this idea the other week, I actually saw another video by Code Recode, which prompted to actually go ahead and uh, look at his code and modify it. And let's strip it down a bit because I thought I'd just make it start off small and try and understand every line of it, which is kind of what I did there. So anyway, this will all be in another video, so I'm going to close that for now. Close this. Goodbye to this program. And um, yeah, that's it for now. I hope this has been interesting. It's been a bit different. And um, what I've kind of shown is that using, uh, I think it's called Software as a Service, isn't it? S-A-A-S. -A you get what you pay for. And I'm sure the, the big companies will do a much better job and they'll do it for you and they'll run it in the cloud. So really what I've shown you is a kind of halfway house, which is a um, yeah, professional version, supposedly, but it doesn't really do the full, full Monty, do the full job for you. So on that note, I'm going to leave you and I'll leave you a little bonus at the end of this video. So thanks for watching and um, yeah, any questions, drop me a line or thumbs up and um, not, no, don't do thumbs down, uh, thumbs up. Uh, Subscribe right down there somewhere. Right down there. Down there. Down there somewhere. And um, I'll see you in.